what was your first, uh, when did your first desire to be a filmmaker happen? Um, uh, I think it was in the 50s or some extent, and I say, I say this because um, I, I always wanted to shoot a camera of some kind, you know, and, and I got interested in still photography but never had a chance to do anything in it. And, um, and for some reason, I just uh, had this thing about wanting to shoot a, a film. And this friend of mine had a, a regular eight camera. And uh, I, uh, I lived right under the, the flight path of the LAX, you know, like near Cent uh, Century Boulevard in Avalon. And so the planes would fly over all the time. And so this guy, had this camera, I used to work at this car wash, and we all did, and uh, um, he had this camera, a, a regular eight camera, and he let me point it at the airplane and film it, you know, and that was a, just an amazing thing, you know, and uh, that was the first, and I didn't pick up a camera after that until I got into UCLA, actually, um, but I, I mean, I didn't, <clears throat> I never thought of, like, telling a story as such, um, <clears throat> But what I wanted to do, uh, and I wanted to document uh, this, this junior high school I went to, because it was just awful, you know. Um, I mean, and I, I tell these stories about how this one particular teacher in class, he would go down the, the, the aisle and, and point out students, and he would say, you're not going to be anything, and you're not going to be anything, you know. And, uh, <clears throat> and of course, he came to me and said the same thing, you know, like, you're not going to be anything. And I was very offended by that, you know. and. Uh, and I remember walking back and looking at the school, and I and I knew how the kids in my neighborhood how they were de how they were destroyed, and um, <clears throat> I wasn't good in English or anything like that, you know, writing, but I just had this thing. I'm gonna say something about this one, document this or something, and I went to high school and the same thing in high school, and so I um, had for forgot about this promise I made to myself, and I got my got. I got made. I majored in electronics, and that's why I met Charles Bracy over there, one of my actors, and 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 uh, and then had forgot about it until I picked up a, a camera at 35 and tried to do, uh, um, you know, uh, a shooting like um, you know, like news reporting stuff, you know, um, that you see like uh, you know, like things like uh, these photo. To journalists would do right, right. And, so and using still cameras to yeah. create narratives. Yeah, I did that, and and that ended <laughs> my first day out on the shoot was my last in a sense, because I'd got this camera. I bought this really cheap thirty-five camera, and uh, and so I started taking pictures. And the first picture I took, pictures I took, was this young lady who had overdosed, and. Um, and so I had this camera, and I just, oh, this is a good opportunity. So I started running around and taking pictures. And the police were all around and, and blocking everyone from getting close. But they didn't bother me. They just, I just, just being very intrusive, you know, just going in and shooting these pictures of this poor lady. And uh, uh, <clears throat> then there was this young lady who was, she had cerebral, cere cerebral palsy and uh, was walking toward me. And I, I, was, I stopped to, to um, I reload, and uh, she sort of came up to me very slowly and gradually, and she was very kind. And she said, "Well, why are you taking pictures?" And I said, um, "I said something stupid like, oh, it's just for fun,' you know." And she said, "Even of tragedies, you know." And it just hit me in a certain way. I just put the camera down. And I was into that, you know. So, I then <clears throat> I was going to um, UCLA. And I, I majored in electronics, and so I got tired of that. And and, uh, and I got into this really wonderful writing class uh, um, taught by Isabel Ziegler. And, and that's when I got interested in writing and storytelling. It was through her and, and the way she taught writing. And it made me aware of you know, the potential of storytelling. And, and, and so, um, but I had sort of a visual kind of way of looking at things. And so uh, I... <laughs> I tried to get into U U USC because it's right next to my house, you know, and uh, <clears throat> close to it. And and so 
uh, it's this catch twenty two. Like you can you can you can enroll, but you have to have the money for the tuition first. And and I wanted to get a to get in to apply for a loan. And they said, no, you have to have the money first, and then you can apply for the loan. <laughs> And I, I, I said, well, but I, I need to, it didn't make any sense to me, you know, how they had a structure. And so we argued and argued. So I just called up UCLA, and uh, they were like, yeah, c -c 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 come on over, you know, and da 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 da. You know, and it was like, okay. And it was, I mean, they, they were so inviting, you know, and just really, um, I'm, you know, obviously so glad I went there, you know, in many ways. It was a fun time being at UCLA, you know, then. And it was only $15 a, a, a quarter or something like that, you know. <laughs> and, I think that, and that was the good and bad thing about it because we actually stayed there until they kicked us out, you know. Yeah, you were so, famous for that, right? How many years were you there? Oh, don't say. <laughs> don't it was awful. I mean, but, but where else can you make movies, you know? You had equipment, you had a class, you had a reflex, all this sort of thing. You had the use of a soundstage, you, all this sort of mixing facilities. Why leave? I mean, you know. Did they finally kick you out? Yes, they did. <laughs> yeah, they kicked a lot of us out because we had the, I mean, we had the, 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 you know, the only place where we could make films. So uh, you're there. Where did you get the uh, inspiration to make Killer of Sheep in particular? Well, um, you know, everyone was making their films, basically, uh, particularly people of color who it wasn't the department wasn't really. Um, I mean, it really didn't have that number of, of people of color in the department. It had a, a, a few, but not really, a, you know, like a, a mass of students. And then when some of these programs came in, Ellis L. Taylor uh, brought in. Um, he was had a faculty this, member at the time. Hmm? Faculty member at the yeah. time. Yeah, and uh, one of the f first black teachers here, and and he instituted this program called f Community. Uh, was it uh, Third World Films or something like that, or or eth ethno communications or something like that, and uh, and he brought in uh, a quota, a number of Native American uh, f f people who went into film, um, uh, Latinos and Asian and Black and like five or six of each. I can't remember how many it was. And then um, um, then we all started to talk about what what is what are we supposed to be doing? You know, what is uh, a, a film that would represent us? You know, and those are the ongoing discussions. You know, all the time, and uh, so I know, like Billy Woodbury when he came and Holly and people like that, um, we'd have these meetings all all the time, late at night. We'd just stay up all night basically and just argue about films. You know. And what are we supposed to be doing? But it was, you know, it was right after the civil rights movement, you know, and and we all sort of felt that we had it was our responsibility to do something to try to make do something social to make a social change, and use film as a means of doing that, you know. And so it wasn't about making a film that was going to be, you know, just indulging in pure entertainment, you know. It it had to be meaningful and. And, uh, no, you began at UCLA, and you're filmmaking quite early. I think several friends was late yeah. '60s. Was this community already starting to form there, or was it, were you a little bit ahead of your time there then? No, well, it wasn't so much at, 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 on the campus, but outside, you mm -hmm. know, and and South Central and Watts community things like that. There, there were a lot of people who were who were writing and and, and different and, and and different art forms and. And expressing, you know, what was going on and what should have been going on. You know, you had Martin Luther King, you had Malcolm X, you had a lot of other. I mean, a lot of people who were um, had, you know, um, things to say about, you know, who we are and and how we're living and things like that. And so, you know, you, you there were a lot of choices, you know, and you felt that. Um, you felt that you, you had to be a part of that. Because I see, I mean, I think all of us probably see a lot of very vibrant, uh, socially motivated films coming from that era, but there's not too much in the, in the US like Killer of Sheep coming and happened at that, at that time. Several friends as well. Mm -hmm. Killer of Sheep uh, originated, the early shooting of it, I, began, I think, began in like 1969. Well, it, it, it began earlier, uh, uh, I mean, because I did several friends and, yeah. um, uh, and then that, and uh, 
because I wanted to stay at, at school because I, I just waited and waited and waited and then uh, went went to gra graduate and then went on to graduate school and and uh, uh, the, the, the funny part was that you know you 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 get advanced to Canada see you know and uh, it didn't mean anything and so. Uh, uh, I just overstayed, you know, and uh, so they finally caught up with me and said, you know, you have enough credits to we can give you a degree, <laughs> you know, and I said, no, no, I'm, I'm, no, uh, I want to get a degree. I've been advanced to Canada, see, and I, that's all there is to it. And so they they made this thing where you can only be here for so many semesters now or quarters, you know, and so. Anyway, so, yeah. but, okay, so thinking back to those early days, or, or even, I guess, to mm -hmm. the present, I know that, you know, you had a well-versed in films, you were seeing films from all over the world, I mm -hmm. think, at that time. Mm -hmm. Did the Italian neorealist films that are inspiring the series have any particular... Yes, I, I, in fact, you know, the, there were a lot of great films shown here, and, and Royce Hall, and, and, and also there was this climate where, as... Um, you know, films from all over the world, all the new waves and things like that were, were, were showing. And we would, uh, as students, it was almost as though they were films done by our community. I mean, you know, we felt a part of that. You know, when, when um, you know, uh, Ressant, uh, René, um, uh, and who uh, um, uh, who did um, Panta Panchali? Uh, oh, Ray, uh, Sasha, right. yeah, yeah, Ray, and also I mean, we were when when we heard about his films, we were like standing at the door waiting for them to, to to come here. You know, we would you know be the first one in line and things like that. You know, so we were uh, very much aware and looking for those films. Uh, Neil Real and Zip play a big part, and and. And and impacting on and, you know, in me in many ways because uh, we were all trying to get at the truth, you know. And one of the things why I did Killer Sheep the way it was, the way it is, because it's like not trying to impose your values on a, a, um, a story, um, but letting the story sort of come, you know, on its own in a way. Because I, you know, one of the things that I learned when I was going here was that. Um, though I come from the community, I, my whole ideas and idea uh, about things changed, um, and so I didn't feel like I was uh, the person to to sort of like dictate or to say if you do this A B C then this should happen and you should follow that, you know, example. Uh, I wanted the story to come from, you know, if you if you were observing life a life in the community, you know, what are the things that's essential? If you go back, what would you see, you know? And how would it resolve itself? And not through you, but just naturally. Yeah, exactly. That's one of the things that interests me about you know you're you're describing this very vibrant historical moment where uh, there's a lot of interest in in developing uh, alternative voices even in those early ages. But there's not too many people outside of yourself at that point who are doing exploring this kind of neo-realist approach, like or this mm -hmm. more open-ended approach. There was a lot of uh, I think. Overt activism, which is great. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love those films too. But uh, were you aware that you were doing something different than your colleagues? Or? Well, y y y you sort of had to because you know, y you know, it wasn't that I had to respond to the com to UCLA community, but to my neighborhoods because these films were made to be shown in the community to have some dialogue and things like that. And and I knew that, you know, um, I, I mean, among my friends, I was one of the, the few that went. On the college, in in a way, and 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 we had different ideas, you know, about everything, you know, and so I didn't feel that I w could be a spokesperson for anyone but myself. In fact, that was brought out very clearly in many ways. There was this barber that and, and Watts that I used to go to, and um, uh, there were two older guys who uh, were from the south, and we would have these political discussions all the time in this barber shop, and. Um, and uh, I remember this uh, this one particular day that it was Paul Robinson's birthday, and you know I was all hyped about that and going into the barbershop shop and and 
and changing the conversation about oh Pablo was in this and that no 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 and 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 they looked at me and and uh, we got in this big argument about that and, and and they had this attitude that they uh, respected Paul Robbins as an artist but not as a patriot because he had talked against against this this country and I was really shocked about that and I'm saying like you guys are from Mississippi and you're talking about you know criticizing here's a man who's trying to to talk to you about you know the conditions the human conditions you know and you're upset about because he says something against America that you're upset about that these guys have been through the army and stuff like that you know they've right, right, been to yeah. Mississippi and suffered all sorts of indignities yeah. and I thought they would be just ripe for right uh, right no they were like really pro this is watch not pro pro uh, American and all that stuff and and then and, and we ended up in this heated argument and they told me that look I give you a ticket to Russia if you promise not to come back <laughs> you know <laughs> and so I knew that then it was all over you know I, I can't only Argue and speak for myself, and, and I mean there were other incidents like that where you, 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 you and now you've uh, got the whole. I mean, in Killer of Sheep, you've got the beautiful ambiguity of of Robeson singing in the film too. Yeah, it's yeah. really, I mean, it kind of raises all those yeah. questions in a beautiful way. Um, so then, flash forward, it took many years to make Killer of Sheep. Between the time it was begun in the late '60s and the time it was finished in '77, you've got the L.A. Rebellion, or what would later be called that, starting to form. And I think at a certain point along the way, would it be correct to say that you grew into a mentor uh, role for a lot of the, the filmmakers who were coming up around them? You were helping them out and teaching them how to do things? Well, I, I think it, 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 one of the good things about UCLA at the time was that when you went here, I mean, you, 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 you had to work on everyone's film, if possible. Because that's the only way we can make films, you know, basically, is share and... and and be a part of the community, you know, here. And we would all work on different, you know, films. And so it was just a part of your makeup at a certain point, you know. And and then when uh, this large group of, of, of students of color came about, you know, um, they sort of depended on, on, on you. And you didn't think that you were doing anything special except for that was a part of, you know, uh, being a student and, and being a filmmaker and to to be there for people because we all you know worked on each other's films. Yeah. Okay. And so then among them was at a certain point Billy Woodbury. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about your early meetings with Billy? Well, uh, like uh, we had started. To, you know, I told you about these meetings we had that went on all during the night and things like that. And uh, and we would talk about, you know, making films and what films should be about. And so we had agreed to, to sort of work on a film together. And uh, uh, and so this came about, this this working together. Uh, uh, Billy asked me would I work on a film with him. I said, sure. And Killer Sheep was, res uh, not Killer Sheep, uh, my a blessed little hearts was a result of that, and uh, and um, we shot it, and that was it. <laughs> you know. Uh, do, uh, do you have any thoughts looking back on these films now, or? Well, we didn't know. I mean, we didn't know what they were going to, to how long they were going to last because it wasn't meant to be shown theatrically or such you know we just thought it was you make the film and you have this limited release and audience you know um, we, we had the opportunity to, to screen the films um, uh, Pearl Bowser uh, who's known for her um, involvement in trying to get films shown throughout the communities particularly back east you know and she put on a program uh, and and Oliver Franklin who did the same thing of getting these black independent films together and tour and tu tu touring them, you know, around the states, you know, and so we had an opportunity uh, for a couple of years to to visit these different cities and the black community and to um, talk about what we what we did and and what sort of um, what kind of venues were you playing in when you did those tours. And from churches to theaters, I mean, small theaters, or whatever, you know, they would four wall it or rent it or whatever it is, uh, community um, 
places. So they would set up a 16 projector and or they would mm -hmm. yeah. They set up a 16 projector. And because most of the films are 16 and I I don't think any maybe Kathy Collins may have had a, a, a 35 or something like that I'm not quite sure. But most of them were in, uh, were 16. Okay. That's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Um so then after Bless the Little Hearts and I guess in the middle was My Brother's Wedding but your later films then started moving um, a little bit away from that neorealist aesthetic, uh, I would say. Maybe I'm wrong to say that, but do you feel that that's true? And if so, why do you why do you start moving into uh, different directions? What what factors uh, led to the advancement of your career in a different direction? Um, I think you kind of uh, trying to get a wider audience and trying to grow. Um, and do something different. I remember when I did Kill or Sheep, there was this response that, oh, it's just a dry film, and it only represents a small segment of of the population uh, who I was afraid. I mean, but the film is about my friends, uh, you know, and everything in it, and it may be exaggerated to some extent, but it all happened, you know, in a different way. And I would just re I I was just um, recreating the things that I, I saw, whereas, as opposed to imposing, as I mentioned before, imposing my value on a thing. It was there, and I'm trying to make sense out of what I saw, you know, and and, and that sort of thing. Um, you know, but, but other, you know, you, and the thing is, like, uh, when I went off to do something else, you know, um, some of the critics would say, well, you know, you're, you 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 you've changed. You know your your values. No, I don't think it. I just just moved on, and you know you always. It's sort of a, a cyclic in a way. You, all, you you come back. You know you like to do certain things. But a lot of it depends on, 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 distribution and or, or, or trying to get it out there. You know uh, certain films do well. Certain films don't. You know, and uh, as as you go, I guess. Uh, uh, further and further from school, I mean, you have to f do something that, uh, you know, is going to make a living for you. Right, so it's circumstance, opportunity. All, all, I mean, yeah. every, everything, I mean... You didn't have the free film school around you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no. They should have just kept you in st school for another 40 years. Oh, God, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad uh, they kicked me out in many ways and, <laughs> you know, say, hey, grow up and... Do you want to tell us about some of your current projects or...? Well, it's 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 always a struggle, you know, to, to try to do something in this business, you know. Um, I've always been reluctant to say, you know, uh, you know, to say you're a filmmaker, you know, because you do it so infrequently, you know. Right. And so, it's like if you, were a, you know, I I I, uh, I always compare myself to my plumber, <laughs> say my plumber, the plumber person I call, you know, and. Uh, I mean, he comes, you know, the least little stoppage, you know, he comes open to open a sink up, that's that's like $150, you know. And I'm looking at him, you know, and I say, like, God, you know. Uh, and you go home, you have any worries or anything like that, you don't have to argue with anyone about this or that, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, how many people you're going to hire and, and all sorts of craziness. And it's really envious to, you know, you see these guys, you know, and you say, guys, you don't have any problems at all, you know. And, and but... Um, and you're working, you know, months on end and trying to get a film, to, you know, talking to people about why this should, why this film should be made, you know. And they look at you like, uh-uh, you know, I, I, I'm not interested in that, you know. And and and, and you see, you know, you compare <laughs> like other films that they that, that that are being made, you know. And 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 I don't want to sound, you know. Too envious or crazy, whatever it is. But you'd be surprised how some films you say, "How do these people make this thing?" You know, what would? And you go there with something you think is halfway decent. You know, you can't get off the ground. You know, I mean, I went to. <laughs> I have to laugh because I, I remember, uh, I was working with this producer, and we thought we had this shoe in. You know, uh, we had this, this. Uh, book that Richard Wright had, had written and it was a classic and so we brought this to Showtime and um, and we had this lady you know who was in development we thought oh she's going to be on our side and everything and so 
it was uh, a Richard Wright story. And so uh, we were talking, and you know, you have this period where you're trying to, to you know, break the ice and get familiar and all this stuff. And so we were doing that. And, um, and it started going badly when I mentioned um, uh, Denzel Washington did this movie called The Great Debaters or something. And I thought it was a very good movie, you know, and and, uh, and so I brought that up and I said, you know, yeah, the, you know, The Great Debaters was a really good movie. And she sort of stopped and looked at me and she said, I didn't like it. <laughs> um, I knew that was, that was the wrong thing <laughs> as to say and bring up. And so um, the other person was like, uh-oh. So, so we got to the subject matter, you know, I said, well, you know, we had this thing by Richard Wright and we'd like to be to consider it, you know. It's won all kind of, you know, awards and things. And uh, she said, well, you know, we pitched the story and she said, oh, that's boring. You know, why do you want to do that? <laughs> okay, then, then so we, we said, well, 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 what are you guys interested in? Oh, we're going to do this film about Louis Armstrong. Oh, that's great. I really, yeah, that's a good subject. And, and, and I said, well, well, what's it about? Well, it's, it's about Louis Armstrong being kidnapped by the mob. And, uh, oh, yeah, that's, I mean, the, the kind of, the stuff that you get in here, you know, you, you have to, you know, your stomach just sort of is like twisting and that like that. But you have to be, you know, otherwise if you start saying anything that's, you know, questioning or something like that, it's like, oh, you are this, um, you know, what is it, you know, angry black man, you know. <laughs> and I've got that, you know. You can't be honest in this business because... If you say if you say if there's racism, yeah, there's racism, but if you, but but you don't have to say it like that, you know. But you say, yeah, there, 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 there's a bit of that, and 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 so, and, and so what happens is so I I must have said that, but you know how the papers exaggerate things, and so I was on this particular shoot once, and this producer, this lady, came to me and she said, you know, you've been extraordinary in a certain way. I said, what do you mean? Well, well we thought you're going to be this angry black man. And I'm like, where'd you, where'd you get that from, you know? Without getting angry, you know, I'm trying to keep, you know. <laughs> and, and I'm saying, well, where, where, she said, but you've been totally different, you know? I said, yeah, oh, okay. But, you know, that's, it, it's just, I don't know, you can't say anything, you know? And you learn to, to, uh, you know, I must have said something in the past that really got me in trouble because <laughs> I haven't worked in a while. But, no, it's really crazy, I tell you. You know, and, and you know, it, it's like trying to, you know, either they come back and say, now, what did I do wrong today? What did I, what did I say? And seriously, I do think about, you know, I try to go back over the years and say, I must have said something. And, and I do remember saying something about one producer that I, I knew I shouldn't have said. <laughs> and I, I, I think that's been part of, you know, my problem in many ways. So, I mean, one lesson, you, one lesson I can give you is... Don't say anything. <laughs> don't, I mean, if, 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 what happens is, like, I've been in situations where I don't say anything about any, I don't mention any names because I know someone's relative is sitting right out there, you know, <laughs> and they will say, well, you know, I saw Charles, he was on the stage the other night and he was saying, you know, you said this and that, you know, and I uh, okay, you know. But, I mean, if any advice I, 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 I would give, I'd say just, you don't have to say anything, you know, just, Stick to the story, and yeah, you want to make a film, and yeah, and whatever they to say, yeah, it's great, that's great, great. You'd be surprised, you know. But if you be critical, and I think that's one of the things that we were talking at the, at the restaurant about how that, you know, one of the things that were taught at UCLA is that to be critical, you know, really. And, uh, you know, you would be in Royce Hall, you know. How many of you know, you've been to Royce Hall, right? Yeah. Oh, only a few of you? Oh. Oh, the more hands you know, confess. No, and, and 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 so you know you would be in there, and it was at the time it was in the sixties. God, they were vicious. The the, the teachers and the and, and the, uh, the teachers and the students. Is Phil Koreski around still? Yes. Oh, yes, oh, oh, okay. Ask Phil Koreski and these guys who've been there. Yeah, 
And yeah, and they can tell you. I see him up there. He, he can tell you how they would tell you. You know, like your film was this. Your film was a bunch of crap and stuff like that. And literally, you know. And you would, yeah. And and you would go there thinking, oh my God, you know, I know I'm gonna be crucified. So, but but and it really helped you anyway. And I remember going to Flaherty, and it was so vicious. But I had gotten conditioned by UCLA, and so nothing I can say would hurt, you know. So anyway. I don't know how I got on that. But you were yeah. talking about how it's different now. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're going to get to oh, yeah. questions in a minute. Yeah. yeah. Not that I can answer them, but I'll get to them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, I think you, did you want to finish that thought no, on the... No, I, my, I just wonder, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, All right, shall we go to questions then? Yeah. So, um, yeah, you in the front there. Uh, Charles, do you know at least one development executive who would love to hear your Richard Wright pitch? And that's myself. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You talked a lot about Alicio Taylor's class oh, yeah. and the way in which it was, um, you know, a, a sort of bulwark for uh, the emergent black filmmakers besides yourself, Larry Clark, uh, Holly Grima, Julie Dash, what have you. Um, can you talk a little bit about like what specifically you got from from him and from that space that kind of led to sort of opening your idea of what a movie could be like? Because I, I recall mm -hmm. you saying that, you know, your experiences with the movies before then would not have allowed you to kind of formulate this kind of, mm -hmm. you know, flat sort of neorealist tale. Um, well, Ellis Hill Taylor was an unusual guy in many ways. I don't know his history too much because it was sort of vague in a way. Um, I know he was in the Army. I think he was in the Army uh, in, in well, the tank corps that... Um, was it Save Patton in the Battle of the Bulge or something like that? And he was one of those guys. But he was very interesting. He had studied economics in Germany. But but what he did was um, he brought this film group together, all these different people, which I think at, at the time at UCLA, there was only not that many people of color there. And I can probably name all the ones that were uh, uh, of color at the time. But he brought uh, he brought equipment there. And, he, and, and, and so... A lot of these guys who had no idea of about film, he made it possible for them to think in those terms that you can be a filmmaker. That you can, and a lot of them went off into, into, and became executives and, different, and things like that. So he had a very in, 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 powerful impact. But one of the things he did was um, he provided the the the, the space in a, in a sense, but he encouraged you to take advantage of it. And he didn't. Um, give any quarters. He didn't uh, make you um, think that, oh, you're going to get this for nothing, have a free ride. We had to tell these students that, no, you're supposed to be making films about your community and what it is to be uh, a Latino, uh, whatever, on and on and on. That, and, and, and as, as a, a TA ended up in, in, in the class, you know, and students would come and say, I don't have any money to, 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 to do this. And he would say, I don't either, <laughs> you know. So I don't know what they're going to do. Are you, you had any? I said, no, I don't. He said, no. Well, look, all these other students come here, they, they do it on their own. They're going to have to learn to do it. So he made them feel not that they're going to be spoon-fed, but they had to produce. They had to be do, do something special, you know. And as opposed to just doing something like Hollywood or something that, I mean, commercial kind of ideas. No, you had to be very, he wanted a program that if, if you were um, a black person, I want to see what it means, you know, how you see that. And a lot of people who came in, a lot of people, uh, 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 you know, people came and think of terms like doing whatever, you, you know, uh, but no. He, the program he, he got money for, he wanted you to do this. It was his program. And I think that really helped the students because we, we talked about that a lot, you know. Uh, yeah, and, and in fact, Ethel Communications came out of that. You know, Third World Cinema came out of that. And that was one of the important features of, uh, of UCLA at that time was having these particular films, political films, that really gave us ideas of what we were supposed to be doing. And, and the trends and things, I mean, like Osman Simbin, I think he had one of the first 
he invited Osman Simbin and a bunch of other African um, filmmakers to come to, to, to UCLA. And so we had to sit down and talk with these, the, these filmmakers, you know, which... Do you recall your meeting with Osman Simbin? I vaguely, uh, uh, at the time, um, but never had a... Because uh, actually, to be honest with you, it was kind of new for, for me, you know. Um, but like the Third World films, they were just amazing. You know, you see at the time at UCLA that it was, and, and some of you who were at UCLA at the time could testify to the fact that, you know, uh, there was this diversity of students. A lot of students were making films about, uh, you know, flower children, you know, hippie movements and stuff like that, going up to Topanga Canyon. How many of you go up to Topanga Canyon? I, I live in Topanga. Oh, okay. I'm not going to say any bad about it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Yeah, but but all the all the students they, they would do this thing, go up to Topanga, you know. But I wasn't a part of that, you know. Unpo I, I, well, uh, yeah. I, oh, I'm sure. No, no, it was very open in many ways. But but you know, there was a lot of nudity going on and stuff like that, you know. That <laughs> that that. Yeah, not everyone. But I, I was like, you know, I don't know. It was it was it was a different experience because I just came from. You know, South Central. You know, and did, did coming to UCLA was a whole different experience. You know, for 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 many of us. I tell you, one of the things I must say, and you can appreciate this, okay. Where, where I lived, uh, if you walk down the street, the police will stop you. You know, and they'll go through your pants pockets, and you know how you you have your, these seams in your clothes like this in your pockets. They'll go there trying to find little seeds of marijuana and all this kind of stuff. You know, really. You know, and didn't call you all kind of names. You know, you you were like uh, I don't know, it was awful. And um, and uh, I I didn't smoke or anything like that. So I went to UCLA, and I shouldn't say this. It's too bad about UCLA, but anyway, they happen. It happens in all schools. But anyway, I went to you know, and Melnitz Hall. You're on the second floor, and the and, and the people at the physical plant, who were the police, would come through the hall with a clipboard and everything, walk down. You know. With these khaki pants on, or whatever, and um, and so there was there would be like volumes of smoke, marijuana coming out the vents, <laughs> you know. And I would always be paranoid because of that, you know, because where I come from, if you just look like you, if your eyes were red or anything like that, and sees you're gone, you know. So these guys would walk down the hall, and uh, nothing. They wouldn't react to anything. Just walk down the hall, there was just smoke coming up through there. And I would just stand there like, just, this is a different world. <laughs> a totally different world, you know? So anyway, I don't know why I get into this. Speaking, speaking, Charles, speaking also to that. Oh. Actually, yeah, we'll come yeah, yeah. back to her. So, so speaking to um, that yeah. aspect of, of uh, uh, coming from the east side to the west side, I just want to mention that that is a plot factor in your short film, Several Friends, which will be showing on the last night of the series. And I think we have time for about one more question out there, maybe over there. Okay, you got one, Charles? Over you. I, I, no, there. Hello. Hello. Um, I guess I'm wondering, you were talking a lot about kind of the differences between where you grew up, even between you know, South Central and mm. Westwood compared to other places. Um, and you talked about showing your film. So I was curious about how it was when you showed your film to your friends or mm -hmm. to family or to folks in the community and what that looked like, like where it was and what the reactions were. Well, I, I, uh, well at, at first when I made the film, it didn't get shown except for, of course, here first and then and colleges and museums and things like that. So it was that audience at first. Um, then when Milestone came about and people like that, and Pearl Bowser and Oliver Franklin, who I talked to you about, Oliver Franklin and Pearl Bowser sent it around in a community where we all came, excuse me, we all sort of went there and, and spoke in churches and neighborhoods and things like that, which was very good. And, and um, because you, you had to respond to people and some people, they always have different responses and either like or dislike or all sorts of re things, you know. But one of the things is that I learned and most of the filmmakers that did that learned a great deal from, because you, I mean, you, you made the film for them, and they're the ones who sort of give you, um, 
you know, um, uh, you know, it's it's like you learn from them what you did and what you did wrong, but what you need to be doing from them. You know, you can't just make a film and uh, uh, we're not w wanting a response, you know, from an audience. And for me, that was one of the best things, was having this dialogue between people in different categories, in different places, in different communities, from the south on up to the north and other places where you wouldn't, you know, uh, even, you know, where it's, basically a pure white audience, you know, basically, you know, which I found very interesting because, you know, one of the things that, that was said about, you know, these fest these people that produce films, they say, well, you know, white people wouldn't understand this, you know. And then I was in Indiana, you know, basically a white audience, and the audience, a lot of response said, well, how can we don't see more films like this? And I was, um, there was, with, with CPB Corporation, which just told me, you know, uh, and they made a film called Sleep with Anger, and they said, "You not don't do this film about black culture and stuff like that because they wouldn't understand it." Okay, so after the film was uh, uh, Indiana, this white audience, and the first thing they said was, said was, "How can we don't see more films like this?" And I said, because these people in CPP were sitting right behind me, and I said, "Ask them because they said you wouldn't understand, you know." <laughs> and I put them on, a, you know, and they said. Well, they never ask me, you know, that sort of thing like that. But this is this is what they say all the time, you know. Europeans don't like these kind of films. Japanese don't like these kind of films, whatever it is. And every time you screen your film there, someone in the audience would always say, how come we don't see these films? Yeah. So someone is lying to us or whatever it is. I don't know what, I shouldn't say it like that, you know, to not know I, you know. But, yeah, but that's been the general idea. And, 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 and you sit around and you have to explain, well, you, I don't know. That's what they say, you know. All right. Well, Charles, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Us. Uh